Hey guys, Dennis here. As I've stated many times in the past, I'm going to continue trying many different types of contents on this channel. Of course, the topic of the videos will always be the creepy and spooky genre, but the presentation and topics will be much varied. But enough of my chatter and allow me to briefly explain to you what this new format of video will be like. And did say really simple formats in which I'll be sharing with you guys some of the strange and scary news on the web. Some of them will be brand new stories and some will be stories that are fascinating but relatively obscured like the video you'll be seeing in 3, 2, 1. This is Oscar, the modular body, and this video is from 2016, which unfortunately I found it only a few days ago. Before I proceed with the story though, I just want to tell you that you shouldn't get too upset about the video because it's all fictional. I thought at first to be real, but as it turns out, it was part of a science fiction story produced by a Dutch filmmaker named Kijk. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, of, of course I'm not. The Modular Body is an online sci-fi story about a near future where the body is not a closed circuit but a modular life form. The technology isn't possible today, but they think it could be something that's visible in about 40 years. This thing kind of reminds me of the home alchemy video about the homunculus. If you've never heard of this before, homunculus is basically the creation of a miniature person. But it's a folklore, let's just make that very clear. So if you're into sci-fi and creepy stories, which I know you are, I definitely recommend that you follow the link in the description to check Oscar out. Alright, the next thing that I want to show you guys is the latest news about geomagnetic reversal. Let's start with a few headlines. IFL Science, our Earth's magnetic poles about to flip, and what will happen when they do? Express.uco.uk, tech blackout, overdue magnetic pole reversal, sparks fear your TVs and phones will crash. Futurism.com, the Earth's magnetic poles are overdue for a switch. Dailymail.co.uk, Earth's magnetic poles could be about to flip. Experts warn the reversal could cause widespread blackouts and make parts of the world uninhabitable. Newsweek, Earth's magnetic poles show signs they're about to flip, exposing humans to radiation and planet-wide blackouts. I think those five headlines are enough to show you what the scientific community is warning us about. But to quote the DailyMail.com article, Earth's magnetic field has weakened by 15% over the last 200 years. This could be a sign that the planet's north and south poles are about to flip. If this happens, solar winds could punch holes into the Earth's ozone layer. This could damage power grids, affect weather, and increase cancer rates. Daniel Baker from the University of Colorado Boulder says that parts of the planet will become uninhabitable during a reversal. And this is from Express.co.uk. Scientists state every 200 to 300,000 years, the Earth's pole flip where north becomes south and vice versa. The poles attempted to swap 40,000 years ago, but this was unsuccessful. As a result, the last time the poles switched place was 780,000 years ago, meaning we are long overdue for a pole reversal, which could very feasibly happen within a lifetime. When it finally does happen again, the magnetic shield will fail by at least 10%. And here's another interesting one from Futurism.com. The Earth's magnetic field protects the planet from solar and cosmic rays. When the poles switch, this protective shield could diminish to as little as one-tenth of its typical ability. The switching process could take centuries, and the entire time, radiation will be able to get closer to the planet than usual. Eventually, this radiation could reach the surface of the Earth, rendering some regions uninhabitable and causing entire species to go extinct. Before that happened though, a weakened magnetic field would likely impact orbiting satellites, which have suffered from memory failure and other damage when exposed to such radiation in the past. Damage to satellites caused by decreased protection from the magnetic field could affect the satellite timing systems that control electric grids. These grids could fail, leading to worldwide blackouts that experts predict could last for decades. Without functioning electric grids, we couldn't use cell phones, household appliances, and so much more. The sudden blackouts would have hospitals scrambling for backup power sources, putting countless lives at risk. GPS technology would also be compromised, 
affecting everything from military operations to our ability to navigate our cars. Additionally, we are becoming more reliant on technology by the day, with autonomous vehicles, artificial intelligence and other innovations all advancing rapidly. By the time a pulse switch did take place, these innovations could be a regular part of our daily lives, furthering the potential for disruption. They do go on to say that we can survive, but I think we all know that life for the average Joes and Janes like us, if we do survive the initial catastrophe, life won't be much of life for any of us, at least for a few decades. But you know what? We can all rest assured knowing that our politicians and the rich will continue the advancement of humanity in their safe and comfy giant bunkers on the ground. We can all be thankful for that. The next story is about the awful flu season that we are in the middle of right now. To give an idea of how bad things have been so far, let me read you a few headlines about the flu in recent days. CNN January 9th, deadly flu season hits California particularly hard. Newsart.com January 20th, CDC, flu has now killed 30 kids as of the week ending January 13. Another Newsart article on January 26th, kids, young moms succumbing during deadly flu season. We probably haven't peaked yet, one doctor warns. Vox.com January 26th, this year's awful flu season mapped, it's still not too late to get a flu shot. New York Times January 30th, like fevers, flu patients is rising. Those are only a tiny sample of the countless articles published in recent days on this flu season. And I know, news is all about sensationalism nowadays, so I don't blame you if you look at the headlines and conclude that it's all scaremongering for those sweet profitable click that bring in the internet money. However, at least on this issue, there are scientific studies to back up all the scary headlines. So for example, let me read you a few paragraphs from the Vox.com article. Why this flu season is so bad. Flu is a viral respiratory disease and it leads to nasty fevers, headaches, coughs, muscle pains, and runny noses that make many people miserable in the fall and winter. There are four species of influenza viruses, A, B, C, and D, and seasonal flu is caused by influenza A and B. Every year, different strains of the virus circulate. The reason this year's flu season is more severe than usual is because it involves the dreaded H3N2, a strain of influenza A virus that causes more health complications and is more difficult to prevent. H3N2 hits people harder than other seasonal flu strains and can be especially deadly among vulnerable groups like the elderly and children. Researchers still aren't sure why, but they found that a flu season involving the H3 virus is generally nastier, with more hospitalizations and flu-related deaths than seasons involving mostly H1N1 or influenza B viruses. This year, more than 80% of flu cases involve H3N2 strain, and the CDC reported that there were 41.9 hospitalizations related to flu per 100,000 population as of January 20th. That's more than tripling from early January. The age group with the highest rates of hospitalization is adults ages 65 years old or older, followed by adults ages 50 to 64 and children ages of 0 to 4 years old. It's not yet clear what the final toll of this year's flu season will look like. But for context, in recent years, mild flu seasons tend to kill about 12,000 Americans and severe flu seasons kill about 56,000. What happened in Australia, where the flu season peaks in August, might be a hint of what we are in for here. H3N2 struck there as well and contributed to more than two and a half times the number of flu cases compared to the previous year. There were also 745 deaths compared to the five-year average of 176 deaths, according to the Sydney Morning Herald. So take some precautions, folks. Wash your hands often, exercise to enhance your immune function, quit smoking if you can, it'll reduce infection risks, and most of all, do not allow anyone to double dip. When I speak to people, I'm often surprised at the large enough percentage of population who are seriously concerned for crisis similar to a zombie outbreak. Now, I'm not making fun of those folks, but I personally am not concerned about that at all. 
What does keep me awake at night is the mutation of the influenza virus. It's basically the small changes in the genes of influenza viruses that happen continually over time as the virus replicates. And what makes that scary is that those small genetic changes can accumulate over time and result in viruses that are antigenically different. When that happens, the body's immune system may not recognize those viruses. A perfect example of that would be what occurred in the spring of 2009, when an H1N1 virus with a new combination of genes had emerged to infect people and quickly spread, essentially causing a pandemic. When mutation or shift happens, most people have little or no protection against the new virus. And that's where I'll end this video today. It's a pilot episode and it's obvious that it'll need lots of improving and tweaking to make this type of content more engaging and entertaining. But it's a start, so let me know in the comment section if you've liked it or hated it. We'll continue the discussion there and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye for now.